tardigrades are famously indestructible, sometimes called moss pigs or water bears. These are incredibly, incredibly small animals, with the largest of them being just over one millimeter. And they've been found in many places where we don't exactly think of life as actually being successful. For example, there's the peaks of the Himalayas to the icy Arctic, to being in furnaces at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. They've been found to survive over 100 years with no water, and they essentially all do this by balling up. In fact, with my kid having watched the Wild Kratz show, I know that tardigrades have survived the vacuum of space by doing this. They are the quintessential survivors of the animal kingdom, but there's almost no fossils of them. And that's because in order to become a fossil, you must, you know, not be using your body anymore. That is to say, the tardigrade must die in order to become a fossil. And as I've mentioned, tardigrades can be hard to kill. But they do still have predators. Things like small spiders, nematodes, springtails, and even other tardigrades will hunt tardigrades. But that doesn't really leave bodies that can be preserved. And even if they die of natural causes, they don't really get preserved because, as I mentioned, they are incredibly small. So that means they will go into the soil and get broken down very easily. And so it comes to be that how do you even get a tardigrade fossil in the geologic record? Well, imagine you're a tardigrade and you're hanging out on a large tree, and suddenly you feel this massive wave of thick water flow over you, and that's because it's not just water, it's actually tree sap, and you're not strong enough to escape, and you do get trapped. And that's how a tardigrade becomes a fossil. Despite genetics suggesting that tardigrades first started to diverge during the Cambrian, we really only have three good fossils of them, and the first two are both in North America, in Manitoba and New Jersey, respectively. And these are both Cretaceous, so millions of years after the first tardigrades should have evolved. This new one, though, is the first one from outside of North America, instead being on the Caribbean plate in Dominica. But it's also from the Cenozoic, which is the era that followed the Mesozoic and includes those two Cretaceous representatives of the tardigrades. This new Dominican fossil has been named Peridoriforibius chronocaribius, and it's been placed in the tardigrade group Isohypsibioidea. And that's because its claws are pretty similar to those in Isohibiceus, which is a modern genus of tardigrade. Now, this animal lived about 16 million years ago, during the Miocene, so it's not shocking that it's closely related to some modern tardigrades. But even still, this is adding one more data point for their evolution, and still useful for understanding the general trends for how and when certain groups started to evolve. But it's important to keep in mind that that group, Isohypsobioidea, is honestly pretty large, and there's a lot of diversity in it. And this new animal, Peridoriforibius, doesn't really fall very nicely into any of the subgroups of that larger group. It just seems relatively close to them. So this animal might honestly still have living relatives that are closer to it still than any other groups that we know of today. And the first step to test that would be to try and find those animals. Essentially, you'd be looking in the soils and trees around Dominica to try and find modern tardigrades, and then to try and see if they're more closely related to this new fossil than it is to Isohibiceus. But unfortunately, this kind of study just hasn't been done. But knowing how resilient tardigrades are, this incredibly rare fossil may be the first evidence of an entirely undescribed lineage of tardigrades which might still be living in the Caribbean.